Hey, Hickok 45 here. I get a lot of requests to uh, get the lever guns out. So uh, I like the lever guns. So I thought I'd get one out today while the snow was on the ground and maybe uh, knock some of it around. This is a Marlin 336. It is uh, referred to as the Texan because it was made in 1952. Uh, at least during that time frame. I'm not sure uh, how many of them were referred to as the Texan, but this is in 35 Remington. Uh, this is uh, a gun I traded a 30-30 for, so I really don't have a 30-30. I don't really hunt and, I don't know, don't have a lot of use for necessarily either one. So I thought, well, if I'm going to have a classic uh, 336 Marlin and a uh, centerfire pretty powerful round, I might as well have something kind of interesting. And I traded it for a 35 Remington uh, a year or two ago. This gun, as I said, was made in 1952 back before they started uh, drilling and tapping the top of the receiver even. You know, so it's kind of serrated. We'll give you some close-ups of it. Uh, nice wood. Gun's pretty well preserved. I had to do a little bit of uh, stock work on it and did a little surface rust off the uh, lever. But it uh, has the old round style lever like the older guns do. And uh, just other than that, it's pretty much your classic Marlin 336. Uh, what I'm going to do is fire a couple of shots here uh, from up here a little bit further away. Now this has the standard uh, sights on it, the leaf sights, which they're not really highly compatible with my eye, my uh, right eye, I have a little bit of astigmatism there. It's one reason I put the peep sights on these guns, but I thought I'd leave this one in its an original configuration. It's kind of a collector's item in, in a lot of ways, so I didn't want to drill holes in it and put a Skinner sight on this one. I've got others that I can do, that I can, uh, you know, if I want to try to pick off fleas over there, I can use those. So I just uh, wrestle with the sights as best I can and not try to shoot anything 500 yards away and I'll be all right. So let me put some rounds in it. Let me show you these things. These are pretty big thumpers. It's a 35 caliber, of course. That's why it's called 35 Remington. So I think it holds about six of them. These are 200 grain bullets, core lock Remington. That's what I generally shoot when I, when I shoot it. I don't shoot it much. This ammo now runs about $2 a shot. Uh, but one thing, the, uh, I appreciate the uh, folks who purchased my uh, recovered bullets on washers and things like that and uh, the ammo fund uh, PayPal donate button. Uh, so that goes to things like this. So I'm not uh, always thinking, oh, there went $2. Oh, there went $2. I don't shoot that much anyway, but uh, I don't have to be so reluctant to load up these expensive bullets and shoot them occasionally. So what I'm going to do is just shoot some plates. Now, these rounds are pretty warm, pretty, uh, pretty much in terms of uh, muzzle energy, but uh, probably wouldn't destroy my soft steel, but I'm not going to shoot my soft steel with them. Nothing like a 223 or a you know, an AK round or anything. I'm going to shoot just a couple of the hard steel plates over there if I can hit them. I can see these sights well enough. I may go for one turkey if I feel like I can see the sights. <laughs> it's nice. It's a little bit of a thump, but it really doesn't kick that much. <laughs> Let's go for the buffalo. That's a nice round, it really is. I'm gonna be brave and reach out for that far turkey because I think he's uh, the one made of hard steel. <laughs> All right, he's in the snow now. We got one more. Let's hunt some more buffalo. Oh. Not sure what the deal was there. Let me pick that round up and see while, I, while I'm here. Yeah, didn't get a hard enough hit. Let's try him again. All right, we'll get that brass later. Let's ease on down to the shooting table and get a little bit uh, better look at it.
to get down here. Here we made a snowman here earlier in the week. Oh yeah. You might notice we had a had a snowman sitting here. We had a really nice one. We spent a lot of time making it and uh, we had a rare winter thunderstorm the other day, day before yesterday, and it was a lightning strike here in the yard. Uh, it was really loud. We came out and that snowman was gone. It was just the strangest thing. I, it either struck it or, uh, or I don't know. Maybe it was our imagination, but the snowman was gone. We couldn't find it. Kind of a crazy thing. Uh, now speaking of mysterious uh, <laughs> occurrences, uh, just as an aside, this gun, the 35 Remington, is the exact gun in this Marlin 336 that was uh, used in a, I guess, a fairly famous uh, murder that took place up in uh, New York, Amityville, uh, New York. Uh, uh, the entire family was murdered with uh, with one of these. I didn't know that when I got this. I'm not. Uh, I'm pretty weird, but not that weird. I don't buy guns because they were used in uh, famous murders or anything. But uh, I found that out. My son was telling me about it. He had seen the movie or read the book or something. But it was a 35 Remington just like that. That uh, The movie, the Amityville Horror, was based on the actual events that took place in that house or something. The whole family was murdered one of these. So isn't that a nice thought? But uh, we'll get a little closer look here at this baby. Uh, notice the top of the receiver, as I was explaining. It's not drilled and tapped. So if you've not had a 336 of of this age from of this vintage it might be of some interest to you so i didn't want to you know start drilling holes in that and putting scopes or different kinds of sights on it since uh, that's the way they came back in the early 50s uh, and then other than that as you can see the the rounded uh, lever you know those are kind of neat because most marlins have the squared off lever which is fine too of course it's got pretty wood in it it's got kind of a red tint to it and it's all in very nice condition. Some wear, but it's all even wear. Just enough to give it some character. Notice the butt plates in great shape. The gun overall is in really good shape to be uh, 50, about 58 years old. So let's put a few more of these big thumpers in it. Oh, I was gonna show you the ammo here too. The, uh, the 200 grain <coughs> core lock is very popular round this gun. I understand uh, a lot of people up north where they have I guess bigger deer and bears and those sorts of things carry a 35 Remington up in Michigan, New York State and around uh, whereas a lot of people down here hunt with a 3030 and then these are the 150 grain core lock. Uh, they seem to be easier to find so I ended up buying a couple of boxes of those at one point just because I could find them had some trouble finding these 200 grain rounds it's like we have trouble finding all sorts of ammo these days it seems and uh, so we'll put a couple more of these in here and we'll just send a couple more down range while we have it out the hammer down it's really a nice shooter if I shot this a great deal I would hand load for it and I'd be able to shoot I don't know, maybe 40, 50 cents a shot, you know, that, that rate. Okay. I'm going to hit that ram. I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it. He's probably frozen down. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> we'll report back to you at some point whether that did any damage to the steel or not. So, 35 Remington. Beautiful gun. Uh, don't you just love pretty wood and blued steel? Yeah, it seems like that's hard to find these days. And uh, as you know, I like my polymer and my... Uh, my uh, modern firearms but boy those are just special and since I had that out with all that pretty wood and, and steel blue steel I could not resist bringing this baby out and it is loaded some more pretty steel blue steel and well-worn wood you know this is my model 29 
I've had since 1974. So any wear on it is good wear. It's my wear and it's strictly character wear. So let's just take a couple shots of this big bore while we're while we're at it today. <laughs> I think I'm empty. Yep. Okay. 44 Magnum, model 29, Smith and Wesson. Beautiful pieces of iron and, well, wood and steel. So, uh, just seems like appropriate hardware to get out on a snowy day, rather cold, uh, brass, blued steel and wood kind of nice so hope you enjoy these guns uh, they're fun to shoot they're fun to look at lots of character a little age on them uh, 44 is not quite as old as the marlin but they both been around quite a while now and uh, i've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of this one and uh, the years to come we will get a fair amount out of that one so glad you could make it to the hickok range today here while we still have some of our snow and we'll be talking to you again i'm i'm sure of that take care <laughs>